Alright, so I'm going for a walk and uh, I'm just going to walk and talk in between traffic and vehicles. So, initially, how can I put this? I came out here to make a video and uh, I walked to a uh, quote unquote the park bench, but somebody was, a lady was there already. She didn't have a place to go, so I just sat down and drank my green tea and made minimal small talk but given the what i was about to make the video about that had to do with my complaints being homeless or as she put nowhere to go kind of minimized any of my complaints i had to say so however i'm still going to go ahead and make the video i'm just not going to make it sitting on the bench because I think it would be inappropriate to accidentally film somebody or she was laying down initially so try to give her a couple more hours of sleep I don't want to disturb her anymore anyhow so this video is going to be it's my intention hold on it comes more vehicles it's going to be a constant issue it's going to be kind of what's going on as far as with my life right now and uh what i'm about to say isn't supposed to impress you and it's not meant for empathy it's to encourage those who are also going through a tough time so well you've all those who have subscribed to my conservative satanist channel have seen my latest video know that uh one of the, the newest tenant brought in bed bugs, which is a pain in the ass. I've had to take all my stuff off the walls. So I, all my paintings are down, all my clothes, all my, uh, everything is in bags. Everything that, except for like uh, my bed and even my blankets. I don't make my bed anymore. I strip my bed completely down and spray everything. So, anyhow, I hadn't seen any of those damn bugs for about four days. And uh, I told the landlord today, I said, man, that hallway needs to be cleaned for something bad. The neighbor across the hall from me, I didn't say this, I'm just telling for the sake of story, has really long hair and drops off everywhere. Well, anyhow, by the time I, had, I asked permission to clean, because he's had a chemicals down in the hallway so I'm partly to blame if uh, you know the bugs have been around and I bleached and mopped the floor and cleaned it real nice so then they might have been crawling around again but uh, it needed to be cleaned and I treat wherever I live you know like how I would treat my home and I like a clean house so anyway mopped and cleaned the entire place today only to about five minutes before I worked out, because I work out about three o'clock in the morning. It's me and Azazel time. And uh, sure enough, the towel that I step on when I uh, get go to get in the shower, uh, I also use the same towel to, my door has like a two inch gap underneath it. And I try to, I play my music a little loud. And it also helped keep the cockroaches out from the other people early before. So, point is, I found I sorry, I found a bug. I was looking at it, it was just a shell. ADD. <laughs> I guess I do have it. Anyhow, I had found a bed bug crawling on that towel, which is like after all that cleaning and everything I did today. It was like, and not seeing any for such a long time. It was just really demoralizing between that and already having to have everything you have put away. It's pretty messed up. So for this past month, I've made phone calls after phone calls. I'm not staying here, even if it takes another month and a half. I'm on some waiting list. Something will happen eventually. However, 
I've made up my mind that I'm going to keep calling stuff until I find a place. But my point is, is that even though I've made, I feel like I take one step forward and two steps back. And I know that a lot of people that go through troubled times in their life feel the exact same way. It's like every time you make any sense of progress, you feel like you're doing anything good. And it's like you just fall back again. And it's like, what's the fucking point, right? It's so easy to spiral downhill from there. And, uh, and I'm the same way. I'm, I'm just as human as everybody else. So, well, I kind of skipped part of it because of what I wanted to introduce is I made this, I made a gamble with Lucifer Gamble a bit. I said, if I got $2 left in my food stamps, I, you know, I'll go get me a green tea and uh, walk to the park to make a video. Cause I've, I've been behind anyway. And uh, I got uh, two other videos I wanted to make. So I'm forcing myself to do this to keep my promise. And, uh, well, even though things are looking pretty dry at the moment, and that can be really discouraging, I don't, I don't give up. And here's the thing is like, okay, I may have called, I, I lost track after 40 on how many numbers I've called. And that can be, you know, really depressing, right? You call number after number after number and like 75% of the, percent of the places are for only old people. And then it's like everywhere else is a waiting list of six months to two years or outright closed, right? However, there's a positive side, okay? And again, this is a little embarrassing, but I think that, you know, everybody needs help from time to time. And, uh, you know, it's humiliating to me to the extent that you know, I went from being a payee for both myself and for my ex, and now I'm having to ask mom for help in order to get the deposit, which she was happy to help as long as I show, you know, my, you know, dedication to what I'm doing, as long as I stay on task, that she'd be willing to help me. Now, I intend to pay her back because I got an ego and I can't swallow owing somebody money whether it's 20 bucks or 100, like it doesn't matter. That's part of my pride. Call it Luciferian pride, whatever you want to call it. I refuse to owe somebody money. Like I, I will owe them money if I have to, but that doesn't mean I'm not gonna pay them back. I can't stand that. I'll roll around my sleep if I don't. So, my point is with the, the phone calls and stuff, I've made a bunch of phone calls. You know what I've gotten good at? besides leaving messages in my number. I've gotten better at searching. I've even gotten a couple of yeses, but they weren't close enough. So I am getting better at looking things up. And my dedication, although I haven't found a place that's close enough, mom likes to try to, you know, help me for groceries. And I think she missed me because I didn't talk to her for like five years or six years or something. That's a different story for a different time. But uh, you know, I think that having somebody to, you know, seeing me again, especially in person, makes a big difference to her. She likes to, you know, feel like she's helping somebody. So I kind of, I have to let other people help me sometimes because it makes, it helps them too, even though it bothers me. But back to the main topic. So, yeah, even though I've not had any you know, successes in finding a place yet to move out to that I can afford, I have found place. I'm getting better at searching. I found places that have said yes, just none that are close. So I'm getting better practice. So that, that's an example of I may not have succeeded yet, but there's something positive in it. So I'm going to give you another example. Okay. Uh, like working out, for example, I've managed to push myself to where I'm doing 120 push-ups. Now, while I was doing 100, I got back on track, back on schedule. And you know, now 
I'm kind of getting to where I feel like I need to do more, like, throw in more exercises and stuff. But I feel like in the same time, it's like, I don't feel like that same, uh, what do you want to call it? Like I'm pushing over an edge yet. Maybe I should push it to 40, I don't know. But it's real easy to be like, oh, I don't feel anything, so I'm not succeeding when it comes to that stuff. And you have to, you know, and I have to stop and think about it. When I first moved here almost two years ago, yeah, I could barely do 20 push-ups. I mean, that's really fucking embarrassing. And now, I, now I'm doing 120 every night. So it's like, it's real easy to just kind of like dismiss what victories that you do have. And that's kind of the point I'm wanting to get at is that it's, it's too easy to only look at your failures. Because, you know, it's just like with, when you watch news, right? I just now thought of this, it makes sense. When you watch news, what is it that they usually show that grab your attention, right? Some kind of drama, something negative, right? If, if it was all just, you know, fuzzy puppies and firemen saving kitties from trees, people wouldn't really watch. But you show something horrific, or, you know, some political person says something obscene, and now everybody's tuned in. That's just how the brain functions. You naturally want to be alert to danger in those kind of situations. So your mind does naturally tune into negative more than positive. You have to deliberately, you know, stop and think to yourself, just like how I'm doing in this video, to use myself as an example, you have to realize, yes, there are negatives that have happened, but there are positives, okay? Even when it comes to that disgusting bug, I don't even want to say the name of it anymore. You know what, though? That was the fire under my ass I needed to get a fucking move on, because I got comfortable. It became a uncomfortable oasis, and for one, at, I don't give a damn what people say. Everybody needs to know how to cook. It isn't a girly thing. It's a human thing. You have to know how to fucking cook for yourself. But anyhow, I miss cooking. I miss having my own damn kitchen. Sneakily, I do have a hot plate, but that's the irony of the situation is that I have to sneak my hot plate out at odd hours in order for me to, uh, you know, cook eggs or cook uh, beef and stuff like that when I make it. You know, I, I get deja vu and stuff. So, you know, there's all these negative sides to everything. Like I said, even with that damn book. But, you know, that was the, like I said earlier, that was the fire I needed under my ass. Been like, you need to move. Enough's enough. You deserve better. And uh, I do. And I think that everybody, if they put their focus on themselves, and I don't mean that in a necessarily negative way, but treat yourself like you would treat someone that you care about. Even if you're having a shitty time. I'm getting pretty close to getting back, so I'm going to try to wrap this up. But, uh, if you're having a hard time and all you see is the negative, try to stop for a minute and think about any of, even with the negative things, what can you learn from it? Even if you can't find something positive or counterintuitive, can you learn something from the experience? Can you make something out of that that you can grow from? I know a lot of people that, uh, in some of my face groups, uh, talk shit about Jordan Peterson for various reasons and uh, now I'm not a fan of his Bible telling stories but when it comes to psychology and I say this because some of the things he says I've been through and I know that is true I'm going to give you an example of this to wrap up the video is on my on my uh conservative satanist channel if you go to my daily playlist and it's there's a video 
and I'll, I'll put a link in here for shits and giggles. That's like uh, before you give up, or if you're thinking about giving up, I forget the title of the video offhand. But near the end, hold on, traffic's picking up. But near the end of that video, he describes about how your memory works with the past. You know, what you think, well, okay, I'm supposed to remember the past so I can have a understanding of, you know, how I got to where I'm at, right? So you can, you know, have a collective history of, you know, your past. That's not how, that's not what your brain does. If you're remembering and you're stressed out about things in your past, for example, with uh, me and my dog Jasmine, I miss my fuzz baby, I'll say it, I don't give a damn if it is cringy. Fuck y'all if you don't like it. But uh, I'm, I miss my fuzz baby. And uh, that's something that's been a prick in my heart for almost two years now. I had to, I didn't just, you know, I had to leave her to the animal shelter and, uh, and hope that she found a better home. Because it was winter and I didn't want to, just because I was out in the cold because of my decisions didn't mean that she should freeze. Well, that's a decision that I made that, you know, I didn't want to leave her in Missouri because I've seen how people do their dogs. And they leave them outside all the time and she's a spoiled brat. I didn't want to leave her outside or have a chance of her being abused like that. The spoiled brat didn't know what it was like to not sleep in the fucking bed. Rather, let's be outside all night. At least here, there'd be a chance somebody might adopt her. She's a real pretty dog too, so. My point is, is that that's bothered me for a long time, why? because I've not been able to think of another way I could, you know, how could I have done that differently? How could I have kept her? How could I have made sure that she would have been safe? So my, I'm using this example because this is something that still bothers me. Although I've largely let go of, I have did the best that I could do. But to my point with the memory, it's the reason why it stings in my memory is because I have not yet came up with a way if this situation were to ever happen again, I don't have a solution to solve that problem. I don't know a way I could have done things differently to where I could have still kept her and made sure that she was safe. And part of me feels like I betrayed her trust and it eats away at my very soul. And that's part, that's the example of my memory and what we're getting at is that a part of your memory is a part of your past is bothering you and it sticks to you that means there's something that you haven't solved and there's something that you need to look into and I, I use myself as an example because everybody's got situations and I don't want to belittle somebody or make them feel mocked or whatever so I use myself but yeah I'm back at my place now, so I'll wrap this up. But whatever your situation is, don't give up and try to reflect and think about, you know, one, if you're having negative, you know, situations, try to either A, stop and think about what you, uh, what has happened is positive. And you'll have to force yourself to think about it because your brain will naturally go to the negative first. Your, your brain will be drawn to whatever it is that's impacting you ahead of time. You, which is why I said the second part, even if you can't find something counter positive to look at, <clears throat> at least try to find something you can learn from the situation. And if you have something from your past that's bothering you, that means that there's something that you need to reflect on that will help you solve that problem next time. Your brain is telling you that there's something that you need to work on. And when you find a way, you know, if I, if I ever came up with a solution to where next time I don't have to abandon, I say abandon because I feel like I abandoned her, but I, I did it properly. I, I called, you know, a uh, dog pound. I actually had to walk her all the way up there because they, for whatever reason, I don't remember now, they wouldn't pick her up. But, um, Anyhow, 
Yeah, try to at least think of what you could learn from the situation. But if something's bothering you, you know, that means that you have something that you need to learn from. And if I ever came up with a way that I could have saved her from having to separate, then it won't bother me anymore. So try to use those lessons for yourself, if possible, and know that you're, you're not alone. Stay strong.